For today's restorative practice, a blanket and two blocks will be very nice to have. And if you have additional props, please feel free to utilize those as well. We're going to start with a blanket folded up for a pillow under your head. And then a couple blocks, if you like, for your hands to ground. We're just going to center here and begin the practice with a grounding constructive rest pose. Your feet are on the floor. Your feet are farther away from your hips than they would normally be for a pose like bridge or wheel. So they scoot your heels out away from your sit bones and then take them a little farther apart, not so far that the knees fall together and not so close that the knees fall apart. So you can feel the heads of your femurs drop right back into your hips. I like my hands on blocks here just to ground, but feel free just to let your palms relax up to the ceiling and release any tension in your arms, palms, fingers, shoulders. Focus on your breath, moving in and out of your nose. And feel the grounding sensation down through your feet, into your hips, into your shoulders, your hands, and the back of your head. And as you feel that grounding sensation, bring your awareness now back to your breath. The smooth movement, the free movement of the breath moving in and out, pumping from your belly. And hopefully you're warm and comfortable. And if you're not, you can always add layers, grab socks or blankets here. And take as long as you need in this pose just to become aware of what your body is experiencing at the beginning of this practice. At the beginning of every practice, this is a wonderful idea, um, but even more so in a restorative practice so that you're aware that you're not sitting too deep into something and causing more pain. And restorative can be tricky like that. So be mindful of these poses going forward as you move and as you settle. And how can we gauge where we should be? It's the breath. Noticing your breath as it changes pitch or speed or location. And as you notice these things, they're usually representative of what your body is experiencing. So notice if your breath is correlating to tensing or maybe relaxing and softening. So even here, notice as your inner thighs relax down to the ground, your breath is less, there's less effort. There's less force and it's so much more natural, but it gets slower and it moves to deeper areas in your body moves from a deeper area in your body. And when you're ready, then you can start to wiggle your toes and your fingers. And hug your right knee into your chest. Give yourself a gentle little squeeze. And you can switch out left leg for the right leg. Pull your left knee in. Give your left knee an easy squeeze. And then your left foot back down. Take your blocks down underneath your outer thighs. Once both feet are on the floor, place the soles of your feet together and let your knees open up into a supine bound angle shape. The blocks under the thighs, the outer knees or the outer thighs, very helpful to prevent settling too deep into a pose. I'm going to stay in these poses um, just for about a minute or two. You're welcome to pause the video and stay in them longer. But again, be cautious of staying in them too long and settling too deep and then preventing more pain or overstretching in your body. The blanket under your head is there so that you can keep a level chin to chest and forehead to chin alignment. If you feel like your chin is higher than your forehead, you're probably extending your throat, your neck area, and that's going to put pressure on your throat when you breathe. And you might feel dry in your throat and even like you um, can't breathe or like you have to cough. So rather what you would want is to have your forehead just about as high as your chin, maybe even slightly higher. So that when you breathe, 
there's no restriction in the throat or your chest. So those accessory muscles to your breath, they're free to help, but they're not getting in the way. The longer you're here, you might notice your knees relax down a little bit more into those blocks, and you may be able to move the blocks out a little bit or even remove them completely. But once again, be mindful of pain on the outer hips or extra pulling on the inner thighs and inner hips. Place your arms in a position that helps to open your chest and allow your breath to move all the way up to the tips of your lungs. Also, your hands resist the urge to grip them, squeeze them, or work them. They're just relaxed. Let your fingers curl in naturally to your palms. Feel the softness in your throat, in your face, as you pump the breath from your belly in and up. And as you let your breath move out of your nose, feel your abdominals contract slightly and feel a sinking into the floor, a sense of grounding and being supported. With each exhale, you feel deeper to that awareness, a connection um, to being supported. And again, you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. So if you've got more time, you can just stay and catch up with me when you're ready. But when you're ready, you can start to then wiggle your toes and place your soles of your feet back on the mat so your knees lift back up. Move into a gentle little windshield wiper twist to the left and then to the right. And take that a couple more times as it feels good to your body, to the left, let the knees move over, keep the feet right where they were when they came up out of supine bound angle, just slightly farther apart than your hips. And then again to your right. All right, I'll grab your two blocks and set them out of the way so you can come up to a seated position. I'm going to take this blanket now and reposition it so it's folded into a larger rectangle, not so much a small bolster, but a big, flat, um, folded up blanket, like a quarter fold or more if you have a bigger blanket. I'm going to take bridge. So two blocks handy. When you lie back down, your shoulders reach the top of the blanket, but your head is on the floor on your mat, not on the blanket. And then a block under your hips. See how that feels first. And then if it feels fine, set a second block in under your hips. Let your feet move either farther away or closer in, farther apart or closer together. But wherever they're going, there's no right or wrong answer. It should feel, however, like you're not fighting to hold your legs up. You're not overworking. You could even let your knees drop in a little. Not too much. It may hurt the back and the front of your hips. So you might have to reposition your feet a few times. Also on the blocks, you want to feel it's the middle of your sacrum supported on the blocks. So that just like you did at the beginning in your constructive rest, you feel grounding down into the blocks from the widest area of your sacrum. And then you feel from your hips down to your shoulders, that diagonal line of energy where your shoulders then can root and anchor without force and without pushing, um, grounding down into the blanket. Again, your head is off the blanket so that you don't feel like your chin is crunching into your chest. And also your chin is not higher than your forehead. Feel your belly lift as you breathe. Feel it expand, especially with those hips elevated. And then open your arms to a position that will allow for your breath to move up as high as it can to the very tips of your lungs. And then as you breathe in, you can feel this movement under your chest, under your collarbones, your ribs, your throat area. You feel your throat area, your chest area, all those muscles responding to the breath and not moving the breath. They're responding to the movement of your belly, creating breath. And 
at any point, if you feel like two blocks or too high, lower one block out. Or even if one block is too, too much, you can definitely come down to the floor. And if that's the case, if you're removing those blocks, then take the blanket and reposition it under your hips back in that little folded bolster shape like you had for your head previously. Put that under your hips and that'll help. The longer you're here, you'll feel more settled in this pose so you can feel the weight of your legs dropping down into your heels a little bit more. And it's not a push into your feet. It's just simply letting the weight of your legs be held by that connection, that grounding to the floor under the soles of your feet. Again, you're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. If you've got a few more minutes that you want to stay here, please do. You can always catch up when you're ready or pause the video. And before we move, before actually moving your body, just think about moving. Think about the breath how it's going to help you move. Maybe it's a deeper breath. And then your next step towards moving again would be simply moving your fingers, your toes, Walking your feet a little closer together so that you can lift your hips and remove one block. And settle on the um, block remaining if you still have one there just for a moment. So it's not a huge drop. And then after a moment there you can remove that second block and come all the way down to your hips. Let your hips rest on the floor just to get out of that elevation. Take as long as you need to ground there, and then you can roll up to seated. And then we'll move on to the next pose where I'm going to take the blanket into another little bolster shape for my head. So I'm creating a pillow once again. Then I'm going to lie back down on the ground with my head supported. So adjust your blanket to the right height for you. Draw your knees into your chest, apanasan, and pause here for just a few moments. Feel your belly breathing into your thighs. Relax your feet, and your grasp on your shins doesn't need to be a death grip. It's just an easy little hook, so you can interlace your fingers, or you can grab the opposite wrist. Keep your hips heavy. If they lift, fine, and keep your belly um, the only work it's really doing is just the initial work that you took to get your knees in and then continuing to breathe from your belly, expanding, feeling the expansion into the floor from your back and into your thighs from your front. After a moment, you might feel those knees just kind of drop in a little bit more, and you may have to resituate your grip on your knees. You might even want a uh, hand to respective shin and the knee slightly separated, if that feels better for your hips. I'm going to move this into a twist next. So again, just use your breath to think about movement. Then open your arms out to the sides as an anchor. Let your knees drop over to your right. 
and let the left arm anchor out gently. So I like to flip my left palm up. Here you can put a block or a bolster between your legs or an extra blanket if you've got it. If you feel like there's too much of a pull on the outer left hip. And then just as you're letting the left shoulder anchor down, let the right shoulder relax. Your right hand might rest on your left knee just as an additional anchor to that side. Also allow your head to rotate wherever it feels best for you. I like to keep my gaze just straight up, relaxing on that blanket. I typically only spend about a minute and a half to two minutes on each side twist. So we'll be here slightly shorter than the rest of the postures. And if you feel like you need a few more breaths here, please feel free to stay a little longer. And I'm going to start to just think about moving. I'm not going to quite move yet. I'm just thinking about the breath that is going to energize my body in order to start to move. And so maybe you want to just stretch out your left fingertips or wiggle them around. Maybe your toes want to wiggle a little bit. And then use your inhale to pull your knees back up to the center, rolling back over to your left ribs. Draw your knees once again back into your chest for your hug, apanasan, knees to chest. And just drop in here for a moment. I'm going to add in a little counter stretch. It's not a really big, massive stretch. It's more of uh, just another grounding, neutralizing position. So I stretch my legs out to straight, crossing right ankle over the left. And then let your arms relax above head in a goalpost shape. If you want a little extra, almost barely noticeable stretch, then you could take your left ankle, flex it, and push it into the outer right foot. And again, this is just a good moment to let your spine untwist. And it's not inflection anymore. It's not being, your knees aren't being pulled in. So it's a really good recovery pose. A few moments here just to relax and unfurl your body as long as you need. And then when you're ready, we can set up for that second side twist, coming back into Apanasan wind relieving pose or knees to chest. And I like to stay here for just a few moments before rushing into the next twist because restorative is gentle and it's slow moving. There's still movement, but it should never be rushed. So take as long as you need here Gently hugging your knees in, again, not forcing them anywhere, letting them drop, feel gravity more than muscle contraction working here for this posture. Okay, open your arms out. You're especially going to anchor with that right arm. Let your knees drop over to your left. And again here, if you need something between your knees, between your ankles, to lift up the right hip slightly, place that in uh, where it goes helpful for you. And then use your left hand where you want, where it's helpful for your posture. So if you want to anchor out with your left arm as well, or if you'd like to rest your left hand on your right knee. And let your head rotate comfortably so you're not fighting your rotation of your neck as your hips move over. Let let that twist translate up your spine and you may even feel your upper body move a little bit. So allow that to happen. And then allow your right leg to stop working. So if you're pushing with your right leg, remind it to relax. With your right palm flipped up, you might feel a really great stretch in your biceps and your front chest area. 
and maybe even into the armpit area. And this is a really good stretch for me. But if it's feeling like it's painful in any, any areas that I just said you would be feeling a stretch, then flip the palm back down and anchor with your hand down. This is really personal. It's just up to you. Once you're ready to start moving, you can start with your fingers, your toes, and then roll back over to your right ribs to hug your knees back into your chest. And then I'm going to move out into that second side leg crossing, um, almost like a shavasan. It's like a relaxation pose. So I'm going to cross my left ankle over my right foot this time. Stretch legs out and then here again, if you want to kind of flex your right ankle and push your foot into your left foot, that'll help create just a tiny little extra sensation in the outer left hip. Relax your arms out to the side or above head and goal post arms. And let your body neutralize here. Let your spine untwist and unround. And as always, focus on your breath. Since you've started your practice, this is a good place to check in and, and just take aware and take a note, take a little observation if your breath has changed since the beginning. If it's slower, if it's longer, if it feels more natural, if it feels easier to breathe a slower breath rather than like it's hard work. Sometimes it's feel like it feels like you got to think a lot to get the breath to slow down, but just notice here how it's becoming more second nature to breathe slower, more calm. Okay. Uncross your ankles and then place your feet back on the floor. So just a moment here in that constructive rest pose again. We're going to come to seated to set up for the next posture and you can stay here for a little longer if you need. This is a wonderful place to be. I, you could be here the whole class and it'd be super beneficial for you. Uh, but when you're ready, you can roll off to the side and push up through seated. And then I'm going to take that blanket. And I'm going to open it back up again into, um, actually, I think I'm going to just keep it as a bolster. So I think I changed my mind. I'm pretty sure I open it and then I go, mm -mm, no. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to keep it like a little bolster. Pull it down lower to the middle of your mat, though, because before it was up behind your head. And then get your two blocks close by. Come into an easy seated position sitting on your blanket. Okay, so I did fold this blanket up um, to make a bigger bolster. And f that's helpful if you feel like when you cross your ankles, your knees hurt. So if you need a smaller fold, open that blanket up and take it into a lower so it's not such a big um, elevation. And then take some time to sit here. And this is time for you to consider whether you need to lower that blanket or maybe even put a second blanket. Maybe you need some more height. And rest your hands on your knees and then feel your head come back over your hips so you're not leaning forward. Notice your feet are relaxing, your knees are relaxing. And if you need to adjust your ankle crossing, take your time to do it so the feet could come together or farther away. You could cross more at the shins, more at the ankles. Once you're settled and comfortable, you can lean forward into a forward bend. So I've got my two blocks. I've got mine on the second height. If you need something taller, maybe grab a chair or a step stool, and then you can fold out to a higher surface with your forehead if you prefer. I'm leaning on my elbows. I'm just starting to lengthen the back of my neck and you can let your chin drop in a little. As you're here, you might want to lower your blocks down and come into a deeper forward bend. If you try it and it's not good, you can always go back. Once you start to fold forward mo more, you're going to feel your hips rotate. So you may have to move on your blanket. So I had to scoot back a little bit. 
because of the hip rotation. And that helps with the thigh rotation, which is going to help open those hips up. Check in with each progression as you deepen this pose and check in there for at least five breaths with, with awareness on your body and, and any, any tension. And then here is my next progression. I've taken the one block to its second height and it's under my head and the other block is in front for my hands just to rest alongside. So I'm on my elbows on the floor. I like my palms down to ground here. And here there's even more hip rotation so you can feel your sit bones now probably pointing back instead of down on the blanket let your forehead rest and if the block on the floor forehead coming to it is not possible maybe you've got still that step still under your forehead or maybe you've got a couple fists stacked up on a block with your forehead resting on one of your fists If this pose is causing any pain in your knees, please do adjust, come up to seated and correct it. Move your legs around, move your feet around, maybe come up a level, reverse the progression if you need. If your palms are not yet on the floor, go ahead and place your palms on the ground so that in the next couple breaths, you can start to walk yourself back in and up to a seated position. Take your time. You can start by lifting your elbows, straightening your arms, and then walking yourself back in with your blocks or with your hands on the floor. Slowly move back the weight back into your sit bones so you can feel your body weight move back into your blanket and your head coming back over your hips again. And then stay there for just a few moments. Feel your balance, feel vertical, upright again. Then I'm gonna fold out to the side. So I'm gonna take those two blocks over to my right side of my mat. And then my right elbow is slightly bent, but my left arm is pressing out. And it's just a side bend. Your left knee's not moving, your hip's not moving. You're just side bending out to the right. You may need to come in a little bit. You may need, to, may need to walk out a little bit. Maybe don't fold so deep. I'm just here for a brief moment. So catch another breath or two here. And when you're ready, you can come back up through center. Okay, walk back in with your blocks if you've not already. Turn around and face forward. Again, just feel the stack up of shoulders over hips, centering. And then I'm going to go to the left side for the left side fold. Blocks go over to your left. My left elbow again is bent here, right arm is straight, so it's almost like you're pressing away with the right arm, and then just lean out over to the left. Let your right knee relax, keep your right sit bone down on the ground, on the blanket, wherever it is. And a gentle little bow of your chin in here, just a nice little pull on the right side of your body. And when you're ready, you can come back up to seated, coming back to face forward. Again, take your time if you want to stay here for another breath or two. But when you do move, walk those blocks back over, one on each side. Hands can rest on your blocks, hands can rest on your thighs. Facing forward, lining up your head over heart, over hips. So let's switch sides. You can recross your ankles with the opposite ankle now in front. Take a moment to sit there. If you need to reposition your hips on the blanket, one side is always different for me. So notice if you need to stack your blanket higher for this side or lower. 
When you're ready, then take those blocks out in front so you can take your elbows down into a forward bend. Start high because you can always move with the next couple breaths and you can always come back out if you started too low. You can always reverse. But if you just take a few moments to settle and, and let your hips open slowly in each progression, it'll feel much more productive and pain-free. And then I'm going to take those blocks down to the lowest height at this point. And stay there for another couple, two or three breaths. If more if you want. There's really no expected duration to be here. It has to feel good to your body. If you're interested in going a step deeper, you can take those blocks in front, one for your forehead, and you can turn that one for your forehead up to its highest level. You can stack the two blocks, one on top of the other, to take a higher level for your forehead. Or again, if you've got a step stool or something handy that you can rest your head on, like a chair seat, that's awfully nice. I'll let your hands relax though, so your palms might flip down and ground or flip up to soften. Let your shoulders drop. And you're not fighting your knees, pushing down. You're not pressing out through your feet. Your feet are relaxed. Knees are relaxed. And you can feel your sit bones at this point, maybe even rotating back behind you more. Here you can really feel the breath move from your belly into your back. So notice the expansion of your back ribs with your breath, with your inhale. With your exhale, you might notice there is some softening into the pose that doesn't necessarily mean deepening it just means relaxing into it more and your body's not fighting it as much Again, we're going to come back up to seated, so get your palms on the mat. You can feel the connection there, and you can start to press that into your hands, lift your elbows, walk yourself back up to a seated position, take your two blocks, get them close in your hands. First, center, line your head up over your heart, over your hips, feel yourself in a vertical position, upright again. And this time we'll walk the blocks to the left side of your hips first. And right hand goes over with that right block. Stretch your right arm a little longer and pull your left elbow back a little bit so you can fold. And there is a gentle anchoring of that right sit bone pressing down into your blanket or the floor. Um, but it's not over aggressive. You just are more aware of your right sit bone connecting and not lifting. If you'd like a couple more breaths here, please stay. And when you're ready, you can come up and take your blocks with your hand, with your right, with your right hand coming back over, bring the block over, just sit there, hands on the blocks, sitting back up into your neutral position. and then go off to your right side. It's nice to take that moment in between sides just to recenter, regroup. And then when you side bend, you're, you're confident that there's not gonna be any catching or anything left over from the first side that's gonna, re, that's gonna fight or resist this side. Drop your chin in, press back through that left sit bone, just a gentle anchoring energy there. And again, here, take as many extra couple rounds of breaths here as you'd like, two, five, 
hey, stay as long as you like, as long as it feels good, but also come out when you're ready. So if something doesn't feel good, please do not stay there longer than you should, right? So you have control of this practice. You can come out at any point in time. Take a brief moment here in a seated position. Get your balance. And then when you're ready, you can take the blanket out. I'll open it back up and smooth it out. And then you're going to lie down on the blanket again with your shoulders coming up to that edge. And then your head not on the blanket. Take a block back under your sacrum. Just one this time. And take your legs, knees in a little bit. So feel your knees lift up over your sacrum. Roll around until you feel your back is not on the bolt on the block, but your sacrum is. So rolling around, you can feel where when you lift your legs up to the ceiling, the head of your femur drops down perpendicular into the block. Open your arms out to the side. Your legs are working here. Your core is working here. So you are going to feel some work in the front of your hip, low belly, and the fronts of your thighs. Press up through the balls of your feet without overworking your feet. So you don't need to point or flex your toes, but feel an energetic press up through the inner big toe mound of each foot. Make sure you're not helping the legs too much with your upper chest area, your back or your shoulders. So that's really easy to do and not even be aware of it. Let this work be in your thighs. So your thighs and your hips are holding your legs up, not your shoulders or your face or your neck. So soften the upper body. There is a core engagement for sure, but it's not so much that your spine is rounding. If you over-engage the core around your spine, your feet will come more over your belly or your chest rather than over your hips. So you want your toes lined up over your front hip bones. And if this is really too much and your legs are getting shaky and this feels too tense in your body, go up against the wall. Put your legs against the wall. It's nice here to focus on the breath, especially if your legs start to get tired and you're starting to feel like you need to come out of this right away. Just take another few rounds of breath if you can and focus on that breath in and out of your nose, pumping from your belly, moving up into your upper back, feel your upper back press into that blanket. All right, just another breath or two here if you can. And if you need to come out of it, please do. You can bend your knees and pull your knees into your chest. So when you're ready, start to bend the knees. Let your knees drop down. And then let your feet come to the floor, right foot and then your left foot or both at the same time. I like to do one at a time. Easy, gentle little windshield wipers side to side, just right where you landed. Let your knees move side to side. Okay, and then I'm going to take a nice little stretch here. I'm going to hug left knee in, right leg out straight. If the block under your hips is too intense, you can take the block out and then stretch your right leg out on the floor and then hug your left knee into your chest. Let that thigh drop in. Let your hips drop on the block if they're still there. Stretch out through your right heel and then let your right foot relax. And the hug of your arms drawing your left knee in is not intense. It's not aggressive. Let's switch sides. Take your left leg out straight and your right knee now into your chest. A gentle hug. Think of your elbows pulling down towards the floor, but keeping your collarbones open, your neck soft. Press out through your left foot and then let your foot relax. (sighs) 
The single leg variation of the stretch is a really good prep for the full body stretch. And again, I'm going to keep the block under my hips when I take both legs out straight and then the arms above head. If that is too intense, lower that block out. Put a blanket roll under your hips instead if you'd like. That's a nice way to go too. It's a nice little blanket rolled under your hips. It's really, really cozy. I'm actually going to come up and take this blanket and fold it up back to that bolster that we had originally for the head pillow. And then I'm going to put that under my low back. I felt like there was just too much space between that block and that blanket. It was too big of a jump. This is much better for me. So again, if you need to take the block out and put a blanket roll under your hips, do that. And just a brief little bridge pose, a little supported bridge with the body out, legs out, arms open, stretching out. This is a really nice pose after taking those reclining forward bends, bridge poses, twists, all that stuff. This is a really good recovery posture from a restorative practice for sure, because even restorative can get too deep, right? And cause some, some areas to feel like, what just happened, right? All right, so I'm going to start to take feet to the floor, lift your hips if you still got the block underneath, and I'm actually going to push my blanket down to where the block just was, and I'm going to take those two blocks and put them under the backs of my knees. Okay, so here's one way you can play with this. I like the blanket up higher, so you could just slowly but surely inch that blanket up. I'm going all the way up to my shoulder blades. You could have it under your low back. I mean, you could take those blocks out and put the blanket under the backs of your legs. Wherever you're landing, make sure it's a really, um, it's a comfortable pose, okay? And and I like to take this as my relaxation pose just because it gives me a moment to open my chest, release my arms. And I actually like to take my hands up above my head and rest on my hands. My hands were cold in this practice. Um, in, in a restorative practice, make sure you're warm. My fingers were so freaking cold that I had to put my hands under my head to warm them up, but it actually ended up being so much more comfortable. So this is another really great back bend. And if a back bend like this is too intense for you, you could take the blanket out from behind your upper back and simply let your legs rest on those blocks. It'll release your low back completely and there'll be no back bend whatsoever. I'm just going to end up resting here for a few more moments. Um, I was still cold, so I decided it was time to come up and take that blanket and cover up with it. So take as long as you need here and um, set up for a restful pose, something where you're not working and you're not overthinking being on a prop. So if you need to completely move all the props out of the way, do it. Get them out of there. I like the bl the, bl the support under my legs up higher. So I took my blocks and I moved them up under my hamstrings rather than on my knees. And then that blanket, bleh, I was so cold. So get warm, get comfortable. Your hands can rest on your belly. Your arms can be at your side. And take your time here to rest. I'm just going to land here for a few moments. Just so you can, you, know, you can see, you can, you can, sh you can take whatever shape of rest works for your body. Maybe you got to lie on your side. Maybe you need to come to seated, go against a wall and sit, put your legs up the wall, but just take a few moments here to let your breath circulate in and out your nose and let your body relax. All right, so again, take as long as you can here. When you're ready, you can come up to seated. If you're still resting, do this when you get done. 
but take a moment at the end of your practice to bow to you, tell yourself good job and thank you.